Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Greetings as always, Mr. Lover. Time for another visit with Valentine. I think our menu for Mayhem is particularly enticing this adventure. It's called the Blue Plate Special. And it was created especially for those of you who are trying to lose a few pounds. You see, it doesn't contain a single protein or calorie, or even a vitamin for that matter. Just a couple of fat heads, which you should be able to digest very easily. Now, if you'll take your elbows off the table, I'll tell the chef to commence serving. How much did you say? Uh, uh, what's that, Josh? I said, how much did you say? Oh, uh, well, uh, $1.75 is what I said, but you know me. Yes, Sam, I know you. Uh, been in the family a long time, I suppose. Must have meant a good deal to your dear old mother, rest her soul. How much, I ask you? Uh, uh, of course, with you boys, it's a little different, but I want you to understand nothing would make me prouder than to do business with the Higby family. Never mind that old maid business of uh, yours. But, but I mean, uh, well, what did I say? Uh, Two fifty? Wasn't that what I said? Oh, sure, Josh. I'd be glad to pay you uh, uh, three dollars. Three dollars you pay me for that plate. Oh, Josh, no. Well, for three dollars, I'd break it over your head. Do you hear me? Let me go, Josh. Please, look out. You oh, don't, don't, little don't you chip break it. artist oh, trying oh, to please. take me for a dodo. Oh, well, I'll break every plate no. in the house before you get it. Don't. And I'll break you, too. Dear Mr. Valentine, you've got to come to Hickby Corners before something terrible happens, before I'm ruined. Mr. Valentine, I want you to, to steal a plate. Yours truly, Sam Ferris. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. Here we are, that big place with the iron deers. Way out in the country, isn't it, Mr. Ferris? Well, why do we stop here, next door? Uh, some of these iron deers always turn out to be <laughs> live dogs. What? Oh, but don't you worry, none. They won't bother us if we walk on the gravel and make a lot of noise. That's what I always do. Now, wait a minute, not so fast. Uh, from what you've said and from the looks of their house, uh, these Higby brothers practically own this part of the country, right? Uh, Josh thinks they do. Well, they have got a pile of money, I guess, And yet but... you told us he wanted to sell you a plate, of all things, to raise cash. Oh, well, it's a farm, you see. Josh wants a new tractor, that's all. And it makes sense, that house of theirs full of heirlooms they never even look at. But what kind of a plate? Early to bed, early to rise. That's what it said. A what? Well, you see, I run a furniture store here in the corners. Yes, we know that much. Well, in this part of the country, a man gets to have a nose and reputation for antiques. Know what I mean? <laughs> well, some of them early chinaware, hand-painted, mottos and things on, you know the type. My gosh, they can get me $200 apiece sometimes in the city. Only this one you looked at wasn't any good, huh? This one I looked at was a fake. Cheap imitation you could buy for a dollar. But out of the kindness of my heart, I offered more than that. You mean out of the fact you're scared to death of Josh Higby, right? Um, well, <clears throat> Mr. Valentine, I've been in business around here for 27 years. I got a standing, know what I mean? Well, so's Josh Higby, but he's mean and vindictive, too. And once he starts after you, you might as well move out of here. He thinks that plate's worth $100 or more. I know it's not. But he's already telling people I'm a liar and not to be trusted, and they should take their antique business to somebody honest. And I suppose you want me to steal that plate so you can prove to people that it is a fake, right? <clears throat> you, uh, won't do it, huh? <laughs> what do you think? 
Well, of course, I didn't exactly mean steal like ordinary thieves. I know, but it seems to me that this whole thing is nothing but a tempest in a teapot anyway, so why don't... George, we... wait. Oh. Somebody's coming. Oh, well, now, 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 careful what you say. People can get killed in tempests, you know, and when Josh gets all riled up... Well, it... for the land's sake... Sam, what are you doing out here? <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> you think it'd be anyone else? Saw you standing out here in my front lawn, finally thought I'd better either chase you away or ask you in. <laughs> Just baking some cakes, and they're not all on order, so why don't you and your friends come in for a piece, uh, huh? uh, No, 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 no. Uh, this is Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine, Widow Parsons. Hello, Mrs. Parsons. Yes, cottage in the trees there, that's hers. But if you'll excuse I know, us, Widow... I know, I know. You think you're going next door, don't you? <laughs> well, there's no one home. Well, isn't Josh or Amy... I heard both their cars drive out hours ago. <laughs> oh, well, if they're gone, we'll just... And I suppose that makes you prick up your ears, because that makes you think the coast is clear. Oh, look at him blush. Oh, no, 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 don't be shit. Uh, coast clear for what, Mrs. Parsons? Well, to steal behind their backs. Oh, I... Sam, I know you're all right, but the way those two Higbees look after her, you would have a chance. Not that I blame you any. I guess every man in the country has eyes on her, and after all, the way she primps for them. Her? Oh. Whom are you talking about? Why, that little secretary, that Doris Drury. She's spending the summer there. Uh, didn't you know? And those two Higbees acting like 17-year-olds and Sam here. Oh, 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 look at him blush. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh now, 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 stop it. She don't mean anything to me. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Well, I got bad news for you anyhow. She's not home either, making her weekly trip to the city, and she's not back yet. So there, Sam, you little conniver. Oh, <laughs> you come all the way out here and brought your friends on a false alarm. <laughs> Oh, oh, that blasted nosy nuisance. No, no, Sam, no, I'm still interested. In fact, in the morning, I'd be only too glad to investigate this case of the uh, plate. Yeah, there might be more to it than I thought. Well, the dog makes a lot of noise, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh -oh. Hello there. Good morning. What? You Mr. Higby? What? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what do you want? Well, this may sound a little silly, but I want to talk about a plate. Huh? Oh, from Sam. Oh, no, no. It's Josh you want. I am Amos Higby. Oh. I don't know where my brother is. Now, please don't bother us now. I'm sorry. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I my, just My want brother to... Josh is a fine man. A fine man, you hear me? He's... No. Go away. I'm sorry. Well, what's the matter with him? No, I don't know, Brooksy. But if Josh isn't here, it isn't him I want to see anyway. Come on. But if there's nobody here, why go in? That girl, Angel. She's supposed to be back from the city by now, isn't she? Well, maybe she can tell us why people get so excited about chinaware. The plate. It's broken. And in the hall there, there are others broken. <gasps> yeah. The plate can be a pretty good murder weapon, can't it? I guess that's the secretary. And she's dead. Take it easy, take it easy, all of you. Nobody's upset but you, Sean. Sure. All right, hang it, I am upset. Why shouldn't I be? You, Pete. Yeah? Get those men out finding Josh Higby. Okay, sir. What about Amos Higby? He was the one we saw coming out of the house, and the doctor says it didn't happen over an hour or two ago. Yes, yes, sure. But he wouldn't hurt anybody, not Amos. Well, it was quite a fight, no matter how it happened. Yeah, hair and curlers, bathrobe. I guess she must have come down for breakfast. Come on, I have an idea, Sheriff. Where are we going? Well, it was light when this happened, wasn't it? You said so yourself around breakfast time. Well, if there was a real fight here, what about that next-door neighbor? Isn't she supposed to be a snoop? No. No. I didn't hear anything. But, Mrs. Parsons, are you sure? Honestly, it's it's too far to hear anything. Uh, she's right, Valentine, it is. Skip it for a second, will you? Mrs. Parsons, uh, those two Higby brothers both have been making eyes at their secretary, isn't that right? No, no, no. They're really nice. It, it wasn't that way at all. Oh, of course they made eyes at her. They couldn't help it. No more than any other men around. 
She was somebody sent to them by their lawyers in town to help out with the books. But she didn't want to be a working girl all her life. She was a nice girl. I talked to her several times. Oh, Mrs. Parsons, you've sure changed your tune. <laughs> well, what's that? Well, I don't mean you really were critical of anybody last night. But now there's been a murder, so everybody's perfect. Oh, huh? I didn't mean that. Uh, but it doesn't do any good to... It might do some good if I pointed out your kitchen window has a nice clear view of their front door. And their front hall where the murder took place has glass across no, no, the front. No, no, no. It won't do any good. What won't do any good? Mrs. Parsons, who are you afraid of? Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, oh, please. You saw it, didn't you? You saw who was in there with that girl. Leave me alone. I've been their neighbor for 12 years. You can't make me say things. I'm sorry, but who was it, Mrs. Parsons? I, I saw him come out. I saw her. I was going to you who... It's such a lovely morning. Did you see the murder? I heard her scream. They were alone, because I saw him leave earlier for the field. Wait a minute. Who? Which is the him that left? It won't do any good, I tell you. You can't hear anything but a loud noise, like a scream, and and, 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 and then I saw her fall, and then he slammed the door shut. And you've just been sitting here ever since, scared to death. Yeah, we'll take care of you. Don't worry. <laughs> And it's good enough eyewitness for a jury, all right. Only in the circumstances. Yes, Mrs. Parsons. You still haven't told us who it was. It's no good, I tell you. I don't know. I couldn't hear, but I could see him. Hey. Wow. Hello, Higby. Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mrs. Parsons. <laughs> I guess this is the one, huh? Hey, Miss Higby. What's all this? My name is Josh Higby, stranger. Heard you wanted me, Sheriff, and I thought I'd well, better... Wait a minute, hold it, would you? You're the same guy we talked to out in front of your place only an hour ago. You're Amos. Yeah, you were scared and you ran away. I'm, I'm sorry. It won't do any good. Are you trying to make a liar out of me, stranger? Oh, shut up, Josh. Valentine, you don't understand the circumstances, that's all. But you realize, Josh and Amos are identical twins. <laughs> listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to George Valentine. It all started over a plate. Or did it? Apparently, a visiting secretary from the city, the girl named Doris Drury, was quite a dish herself. Or at least both of the Higby brothers and every other middle-aged man in the vicinity thought so. But now, Doris is dead, struck down by one of those same heavy plates. Though for a moment, the crime looked simple. There was practically an eyewitness, and it was obviously a Higby who did it. All right, but which one? Because if your name is George Valentine, you've just learned that the Higbys are identical twins. Well, at least it was one of you twins. That's something. Sure, that's something, all right, sir. Well, now, is that all you're going to say, Josh? Don't know yet. Haven't talked to my lawyer. All right. But in the meantime, i got to lock you up. You know that. Well, don't apologize for it. Mrs. Parsons says it was one of you. You heard her say that, didn't you? There on the farm, you're both dressed about the same. I heard, I heard. Oh, laughing blabbermouth. She can't help it. Should have sicked the dogs on her the first time she borrowed a cup of sugar. Oh, get in there. Hmm. Don't see Amos anywhere. We'll get him, don't worry. Now listen, Josh. I'll get your lawyer, but he's going to advise you the same as I am. That you should tell everything you remember about what happened. Oh, so, so. Be glad, sir. Well? Well? Well, pretty sore at this furniture guy, this Sam, about one of your family's heirlooms, a plate, I think he said. Sam's a liar. I'm no authority, but those plates, everything in the house is as good as... What's that got to do with it? Well, you see, Josh... Hold it, Sheriff. Let me with you. Oh, nothing, Josh. But that girl, Doris, was certainly pretty. What? In love with Amos, I understand. 
What are you trying to do? Leave her out of it. Well, that's a little hard to do in the present situation. This is our town, not yours, mister. Because you'd been putting on the dog for her, too, isn't that right? Get him out of here before... Thank you murdered her, didn't you? Why, you meddling, John! Oh, no. gosh. Well, you're quite a temper. Did you kill her, Josh? You still haven't told us anything. What time did you get up this morning, Josh? Usually out in the fields early, both of you. But which one was first? Oh, come on, Sheriff. Let him wait for his lawyer. Can't make a man talk, you know. No, but you can trip him up. We better work fast before you get a permanent puzzle thrown in your lap. Hey, where are you going? To start at the beginning where I came in. On a plate. Okay, Sam, how many items have we found now that are fake? Well, now, let me see. There's the Dresden doll. That's strictly Detroit. Uh, and, and, and three plates out of the ten there on the wall. I'll go take a look through the other rooms, George. Okay. Now, let's stick to just the stuff we saw so far, Sam. That's all of it, I think. Plus the early to bed, early to rise. And uh, uh, that pair over there. What's the total value, I mean? Of the fakes? Well, I don't get you. Oh, yes, you do. Because each one called for an imitation, right? Well, uh, sure, to match out the sets and so, so what's on. the total value of the fakes if they were real? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Well, say 150 mm, times three. And Dresden, of course, is higher prices. Oh, just in rough figures, please. Uh, $1,000. All told, 1200 maybe. Uh-huh. But that's not enough to go killing people over. I don't get what you're driving at. Don't you? Sam, maybe the reason Josh was mad at you the other day was because he really had no idea there were imitations in here. George, look at this. Oh, yeah, Brooksy? How much do you suppose this one's worth? What's that, a package? Yeah, all neatly wrapped up. He's almost ashamed to open it. Let me see. Where'd you find it? It's in this suitcase under the stairs. Oh, wait a minute. Take a look at this, Sam. Hmm, another plate. It's a real one, all right. It is, huh? Mm -hmm. And the initials on the suitcase are D.D. George... Doris Drury. Oh, say, she used to make trips every week to the city for the Higby. Yeah, I know. All begins to fall into place, doesn't of it? Of course. She took things back and forth all the time. Well, her trips were for business. I mean, the Higbys wouldn't have known the difference. And she could have picked up imitations to replace things with. That's the idea. She was killed, but it was a crime of passion, a fight. Sam here started the ball rolling. He got Josh all upset. Josh told Amos. And if one of them found out what Doris was yeah, doing... Yeah, that's he'd... right. It'd be a pretty big blow. Especially to a middle-aged guy who thought he was the reason for lowered eyelashes from a good-looking young woman. And then he finds out she was stealing and not even large amounts. It would... George, are the police all through here? Hmm, what do you mean? Well, they were out of the house even before we came back, but just now I felt a draft behind me. It must be from the back hall. I, I, I'm getting out of here. Somebody's back there. I don't want any part of this... Listen. Come on. Be, 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 be careful, Valentine. Why? There's only one person that can be. All right, Amos, come on. Get out of my way. Oh, no, you don't, Buster. Look out. Amos, the gentle one, huh? Well, maybe this will work. No. No, I, I, I don't know. Don't know what? Come on, what's your story going to be? No, 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 I, I won't tell you anything. But you were hiding here, and earlier you ran away. Your brother's already accused you of the murder, you know. What? What did you sure, say? Sure, he said you No, no, no. I don't want to hear it. I won't tell you anything. Very good. Very fine. At least we got both of them, haven't we? Well, Sheriff, I tried one bluff on Amos, but it didn't work. Don't worry. I'll keep them separate, all right. And I suppose sooner or later we can cross-check and break down their stories. We hope. The attorney's going to kill me if I hand it to him this way. It's going to be one for King Solomon. Mm-hmm. Twins are identical in appearance. One of them committed murder. The other one is keeping quiet to protect him. And keeping quiet so neither one can be tried for first-degree murder. Holy smoke, you can't hang two men when only one did it. What's the court going to do? End up by saying they both aided and abetted a criminal? Lawyers could argue till doomsday. Uh-huh. Hey, Sheriff, will you trust me? No. Oh, I don't know. What do you mean? <laughs> I always wanted to play King Solomon. Why? 
Because he had a thousand wives? No, never mind. Just give me those keys, will you? Give you what? Your cell keys. Then meet me back out at the Higby's. Don't worry. Your deputy Pete can tag me. Now, look. I want those guys kept apart. The only way we're ever going to saw this twin act in half you is... You want the murder solved, don't you? Okay. Let's throw a little party. <laughs> Sit here, Josh. I'll be right back. Why not? It's my own driveway, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Come on, Brooksy. George, are you sure you know what you're doing? I want to get Mrs. Parsons. I'll get her. You stay there and watch. Hey, Pete. Yeah, right behind you, Mr. Valentine. Come on over here, please, will you? What about Amos here? I can't leave him alone. Come on, I said. Step on it. Well, okay. Just the sheriff's in the house already, but... Hey, that's Sam over there. Yeah, yeah, both of you. Come on, step on it. George, you can't even see the cars from here, let alone the Higby's. Hey, listen. That was a car door. They're getting together. Say, look, Stand I better... Still, will you? I know this is all against police practice, but there's a reason. Mr. Valentine? Yeah, Mrs. Parsons. Over here. Come on out. I want you to take a look at something. I'm sorry. I got a job. Those two backs there, where am I supposed to take Hey, them? wait, wait. They're handcuffed, aren't they? Oh, for the love of... Bring her over, Brooksy. George, no, look. The Higbys aren't in the car. Where are they? Hey, stop you guys. Sam. There's one of them after Sam. Oh, get away from me! Sheriff! George, help him! Hey, hey, you... How Josh came at me, Mr. Valentine? You put Mrs. Parsons up to it, just sniveling little words. Both of you, will you? What is all this? Mrs. Parsons, can you tell these two men apart? Oh, I'm so sorry, Amos. Of course I can. Josh, I didn't mean to. All right, now take it easy, please. I can tell them apart myself now. But you couldn't at a distance, I know that. Well, it's true. Josh may be a bit more aggressive than I am. Sure, but... Amos. And Josh jumped for Sam because Sam put Mrs. Parsons up to something. He what? Hey, now, looky here. But I... I think the boys will talk now, Sheriff. How about it, Josh? Did you mean, did I kill her? No, I didn't. I don't believe that. See what I mean, Sheriff? Easy way out of a riddle. How about you, Amos? She was a very sweet girl. Why would I kill her? Oh, I'm so glad. I told you I didn't want to say anything, but... No. No, I still saw what I did. Sure. We're just as bad off as we were, Mrs. Parsons. But at least we know now that the Higbys kept quiet because they hadn't checked with each other yet. Uh, now, wait a minute. Sam, get over there and stand beside them. Huh? You heard me. Well, he's about our size. Now, Dolly, I, I know you've known us for years, but you could have been mistaken about us. Hold it, all of you, please. I'm afraid this is pretty simple. There were a couple of tip-offs. I didn't think they were strong enough, but I guess they are. Josh, your secretary made weekly trips to the city, didn't she? Huh? Well, that's right. You see, we got a lot of holdings and investments. But last night, she came back from the city. So if she were stealing some of that authentic china, she'd scarcely wrap one up and leave it in her suitcase until next week's trip. Hey, that's right. In other words, somebody planted that there after the police left the house. So we'd think Doris was a thief. So we get the wrong idea about motive. What's all this stealing plates? I don't even know what you're talking about. Take it about. easy, Josh. Take it easy. You couldn't have done it anyway. You were in jail. Besides, it was too neatly wrapped. What's that? <laughs> well, I couldn't wrap a plate that neatly. I doubt if any man could. Uh, Mr. Valentine, I... Uh, except a dealer in those things? Now, now, wait a minute. Oh, I, I... No, Amos, I thought of that. But there's another clue. Same type. Mrs. Parsons, you bake cakes on order, don't you? So uh, I guess you haven't too much money. She's all right, Mr. Valentine. And you've lived here for years, been in and out of the Higby's house. You could have stolen a few things, couldn't you? Not much, but enough to help out. I saw somebody out the window. I was at my kitchen window. Nobody else out here but you and the Higby brothers. So you grabbed at the straw of being a witness. I was And honest. it might have worked, too. Only this was a real crime of passion, wasn't it? The pretty young thing from the city, sure, primping and getting all the eyes. She was awful. Oh, no, she wasn't. But the Higbys have a lot of money. And I guess she might have had her cap set for one of them. Anyway, she'd be rough competition for a middle-aged widow. No! Well, what happened? She decide you were a nuisance? she find out about the plates and threaten to tell the Higbys? No, no, she didn't. And she wasn't any good for them. Oh, cut it out, lady. The girl had come downstairs to talk to somebody. Josh and Amos always went out to work early. She came down in a bathrobe with curlers in her hair. Well, did you ever see a woman who was trying to make an impression come downstairs with curlers in her hair, looking like a mop to meet a man? Oh, 
Oh, George, that poor Mrs. Parsons. Well, she committed murder, didn't she, Angel? So come on, let's get out of here. We can figure the rest on the way home. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. It happened, I guess. Yeah, sure. Living next door for years and years. Probably considered the Higby brothers her private property. Hope to marry one of them. <laughs> then along came Alana Turner. The only thing I don't understand is why Mrs. Parsons would steal from them. Well, considered their property hers, too, I guess. Jumping out of the gun on what she hoped for the future, maybe. It wasn't much through the years, but she yeah, probably... Yeah, she must have been panic-stricken when the girl found out about it. You know, George, sometimes you're very brilliant. All those feminine-type clues, wrapping packages, curlers and hair. That surprise you? Huh. Tell you a secret, Angel. I spent a good many years observing women. Imagine. Oh, but you should have caught on to that business. No, 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 not I. I've spent all my time observing men. Oh. We ought to get together sometime. Now, there, Chris. There's an observation. You have just heard Blue Plate Special, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you Let George Do It. (laughs) 